Welcome to Global One Media Stocks to Watch. I'm Michael Swido. We have an extraordinary interview for you today with a gentleman who is shaking up the world of medicine. I've got to warn you, though, the way he's doing it, well, it may sound a bit yucky. More about that in a moment. But I have to say his approach is incredibly innovative. It draws on nature and it is saving lives. Not only that, the company that he has founded is set to list on the NASDAQ this year. Carl Baptista, it is a pleasure to welcome you to the program and congratulations you, on your plans to go public. Thank you, thank you. Yes, it's uh, been a long time coming. Your company is called Cuprina and it specializes in the manufacture of products that treat chronic wounds. Your solutions reduce amputations, they eliminate infections. This is particularly useful for people who suffer from diabetes and vascular disease, as well as older patients who have trouble healing. Your approach, as I mentioned in the lead, is grounded in nature. You study the natural world, and you have a background I should have in working with insects. And that has led you to, well, I guess I've been avoiding saying it so far, it led you to maggots, those squirmy larvae that eventually transform into flies. So Carl, I have to ask you, why maggots? What do they do that's better than modern medicine and pharmaceuticals? Um, so in, in a chronic wound, the first thing you have to do is you have to clean it up. You have to remove all the devitalized tissue, all that, that sort of necrosis, the dead tissue, um, before the wound can then start healing again. Um, and so the, 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 the golden standard in the clinical setting now is to use a scalpel, a sharp tool to scrape away at that wound. Um, mm. And although that removes that debris very quickly, it does traumatize the wound bed underneath and so impairs healing in the future. The most, mod the most simple and the most uh, natural way to remove this debris is to get the insects to remove them. It's actually part of their natural diet. So all we do is just apply these maggots in a medical grade form for them to be used live on the patient's wound uh, to remove all that debris so the wound can progress forward. How do the maggots help with the healing though? Explain that to us. So active maggots don't heal the wound. What they do is they clean and they disinfect the wound. How they do this is they, they use their mouth parts and that breaks down that tissue. Um, um, and then they liquefy it with some of the enzymes that they secrete in their saliva. And then that liquefies it enough for them to be able to suck it up and remove it from that, from that wound environment. And then they digest it within their system and then they defecate it. Now we, we've tested um, all the, the remnants of their, their gut fauna. And we found that it actually aids in the breakdown of more tissue. So there is a sort of an eat and a treat at, uh, at the same time. Eat and treat. So the maggots are eating the bad stuff and that's how they clean the wound. And yes. even if that's what happens, I mean, a lot of people may not like the idea of a doctor placing these squirmy creatures inside their bodies. I mean, I gotta say, yuck. But you get that. And you've developed a product that enables maggots to do their job without actually coming into direct contact with a patient. Tell us about that. Right, so we have two, we have two different products. One we call the, um, the, the uh, MediFly Free Range. Now the Free Range, as, it's, as it sounds, is, is we allow those maggots to freely roam over the surface of the wound, move into the pockets of areas where they have the highest amount of food, or which is the, the necrotic tissue, and, and some of that bacteria as well, which is also their food. Um, but uh, in certain instances, we don't want maggots sort of crawling into crevices and, and place, getting hidden into orifices of the body. So we then have a, a product that we call the baggot, which is basically maggots placed into a closed dressing, a bit like a tea bag, um, where the perforations in the fabric allows the maggots to directly feed onto the wound bed without actually coming into contact with it through the secretions that, that leach out through these fabrics. I have to say that product is creatively named Baggots. So you have those two <laughs> products that promote healing, the free range and the Baggots. Healing though is just one part of the equation. Uh, once the wound is clean, it needs to be closed and the Maggots yeah. don't do that. So you turn to another animal for help. What is that? Yes, yeah, so that's the American bullfrog. American bullfrogs. Uh, why bullfrogs? Where did this idea come from? Um, actually, this this idea came uh, not from us. This idea came from uh, NTU, one of the uh, major local universities here. Now, they have a waste valorization project going on where they look to uh, take waste and turn it into higher value than its uh, original um, uh, material that it was that, that it was derived from. Uh, and um, what they found was that there are millions of frogs eaten in Singapore every day, uh, every year. Um, and uh, the skins of these frogs are discarded as waste. 
So they've found a way to extract the really valuable collagen that um, it, it is derived uh, from this waste material. Um, now, frogs are very uh, unusual creatures because they live in both a wet and a dry in environment, being amphibians. Um, and all the traditional sources of, of collagen today come from either land-based animals or from marine-based animals. And so because of that, they don't, they have very, very different properties. Um, but whereas with the amphibians, they have the, the best of all, both land and, and, sea, and, and water-based uh, creatures uh, together in, in one sort of molecule. Uh, and so NTU developed the tech and, and we went over to see them and said, you know, could we, could we potentially uh, take a license for that and, and then develop uh, wound care products a post maggot therapy. Um, the idea that Cuprina has as a company was to go from chronic wounds to closure. Um, and there's basically three stages in there. You've got the uh, the area where you debride with the maggots, and then you need to grow the wound first before you can close the wound. Um, and so what we do is we use this uh, uh, amazing uh, biomaterial that we generate from the skins of bullfrogs to create uh, scaffolds that allow cell tissue to grow um, uh, much faster than they would traditionally do. Yeah. That's really interesting. So there's a couple of things there for our viewers. Uh, we're in Singapore, you're in Singapore, your company Guprina is, and NTU is a technical university here. Yeah. Uh, and Singaporeans love frog porridge. So that's where all <laughs> the frogs are. Uh, yes, I don't sir. know the stats, but maybe there's more frogs eaten here than in France. Uh, and all these frog skins were being thrown out. So nothing was happening to them. And you're telling us that they're actually really quite valuable. So, I mean, I just think that's that's fascinating. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah, one, one, gram, one, one skin contains roughly about one gram of collagen. Um, and that's probably enough to make, you know, a, a, at least eight to 10 uh, scaffolds uh, for a patient. So this product, the solution is going to be commercially available later this year. Uh, what's it going to look yeah. like? Is it a cream, a patch? Uh, tell us. Actually, it's a bit of everything. So our first product is called SP1 or Anurun SP1. And uh, this one is a scaffold. So it looks like a sponge. Um, and it's just, you know, nano, nanomolecules of this collagen orientated to a sponge that's placed directly onto the wound after it's been cleaned. Um, and then cells can reattach to it. It can also suck up some of the the wound uh, exudate and remove that from the, the environment. But um, yeah, it'll look like a nice thin sponge. Um, and then uh, thereafter, we'll be uh, able to look into the products that can help close the wound, uh, reduce scar tissue formation, you know, things like that, and accelerate that that duration that it takes to, to heal these wounds. So let's take a step back now. Uh, Caprina's mission, if I can quote, is to harness the power of nature and provide end-to-end yes. -end wound care solutions that take patients, yes. as you said, from chronic to closure. So yes. we've covered both parts of that equation. The maggots address the chronic wounds. The bullfrog collagen promotes healing. For the moment, these products are going to be applied by a doctor or a nurse, but you're in the process of developing smart dressing, so-called smart dressings that patients can apply themselves. Tell us, how does that work? Well, I think this is a combination of where we see the telemedicine world moving into um, and mm -hmm. the, where we see the uh, biochemistry, the sort of the, the science behind developing uh, new sort of novel products moving to in the future. I mean, one thing I can add to, to what you've just stated is that we also believe that all our, all our products, all the biomaterials, all the raw materials that go into the manufacture of our product have to be derived from sustainable uh, sources or alleviate a waste problem, which we are doing with, say, the, the collagen. But um, uh, with the maggots, we grow them sustainably in our lab, right? We don't take anything from the wild and things like that. Um, yeah, so the smart dressings. Smart dressings are an idea that we we believe will be the way that dressings move to in the future. They need to be able to do some of the function that um, a, a clinician would be doing. Um, and so that function would be to be able to detect changes in the wound. So as the dressing interacts with the surface of the wound, so does the chemistry within that dressing and by interacting with it, it can tell whether the wound is progressing or regressing. And so then if it's progressing or regressing, it can then release um, a beneficials that's already stopped within the, in, in the dressing into the wound to address it. So if it's hmm. obviously progressing forward, it can accelerate that progress. If it's regressing, it can try and fix that. And by releasing these beneficial, shall we say, into the wound, it can also create a certain amount of uh, 
uh, understanding about where it's whether the wound is is progressing, and then it can then use that um, through your mobile device to then update the clinician and, and the clinician's records. So the next dressing change, you understand exactly where the wound is as well. So it would it would be able to to diagnose or, or at least to understand the 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 status of the wound. It will be able to treat simultaneously, uh, and then it will be able to report as well. I love this idea of a dressing that actually reports back to the patient and to the doctor. It almost sounds like the medicine of the future, but I get that you all are working on that right now. Um, yes. So really fascinating technology based in nature, sustainable, like you said. Let's take a look at the business side of the equation now and some of the numbers behind it. And we're going to do this rapid fire style. Are you game for that? Um, I'll give it a go. I'm the technical guy. So um, yes, definitely. All right, let's start. Thank you for that. Number one. How big is Caprina's business and how much revenue do you have? Um, currently, we're in big, uh, I'll say in terms of size, we're currently only in Singapore, but we also um, uh, cater to the Hong Kong market. We are growing and expanding. We'll be in in um, Saudi Arabia, uh, covering the MENA region within by the end of this, by the by the first half of this year. Um, uh, currently, our market's about, uh, our uh, revenue's about 100,000, a little bit over that. But we are we have expended a lot of money in our development to develop the strategy. And and as with these products are now becoming available through the regulators, post-regulation, we'll be able to expand out really quickly. Is your company profitable? At the moment, no. Uh, we're still sort of in startup mode. But we once we get our, like I said, once we get our chronic to closure strategy fully operational, at the moment, we're only at, clean and disinfect. But once we get that fully operational, yes, I believe we will be. So you're investing for the future. How big is Absolutely. your target market and how do you define it? Um, I think the, the current target market is about globally is about 11, 11, 11 and a half billion. Um, and that was in 2021. I think that's set to grow to about 19, nearly 20 billion by 2029. All right, next, how much money do you expect to raise in your listing on the NASDAQ and how is your company going to use it? Uh, we filed with the SEC for uh, a raise of uh, of about ten million uh, uh, as the uh, as the IPO, um, but uh, about forty something percent of this these proceeds will be used for our, directly for our growth uh, and expansion into our new new regions. Uh, about 12, 15, 12 to fifteen percent is expected to be used directly into R and D. Okay, so a combination of expansion and R and D. Carl, Caprina is a relatively small player in the medical industry. I'm wondering, and, and we talked a bit about this offline, whether you expect you're going to work more with established names in the industry to extend your reach. Uh, I don't know, maybe by offering them white label products so they can use your products with their brand. What do you think? Yeah, so the, the biggest um, issue with our our being able to scale up really, really quickly is distribution. Uh, we need to be able to get into uh, multiple markets simultaneously to have a uh, very good scale up. And that requires us to go through individual regulation in individual countries. So I think the fastest way for us to scale up is to partner with these companies um, and, and, and scale up that way. Um, the molecule that we derive is is sustainable, right? So it's, it's from a waste material um, and it is, then uh, converted into something uh, that is better than the raw material available in the market. So I think most of these big companies who are looking for gaps or to fill up gaps in their portfolio, whether it be a sustainable product, whether it be to to capitalize on a um, on a or on a clinician need, um, uh, yeah, we would be glad to partner with them. Uh, we would be glad to take um, uh, some of our ideas um, and and white label it for them. Yeah. No problem whatsoever, yeah. Well, there's certainly a lot of M&A activity in the pharmaceutical space, in the medical space. Uh, yes. So, I mean, you're not there that moment, but certainly I, I think an industry that's an interesting trend and that could impact your company later on. So yeah. maybe that segues to my last question for you, and this is for all the investors out there. Uh, Cuprina should be listed uh, on the NASDAQ in the months ahead. Why should retail investors buy it? Why is Cuprina a stock to watch? Well, I think we've got a lot of uh, upside potential, right? I mean, there is there is no other company out there that does what we do. Uh, we we generate we generate uh, medical grade products uh, from a material that breeds in my lab, the flies. Um, and you know, so I'm a medical med medical device manufacturer with very 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 low uh, raw material costs. In fact, my raw material reproduces. So hmm. so we're very interesting people in that we. We see ourselves as 
um, an example for other people to follow in terms of that we could start a company based on sustainability. That's our fundamental um, sort of DNA. Uh, and that we are uh, getting into a market space that is increasingly getting um, uh, more and more patients as the population ages and you know as people um, diabetes, diabetes is on the rise. So there is a definite need for this um, uh, to improve the quality of life. Carl, this has been a fascinating conversation. I think it's really interesting to hear about how you're grounding your company in sustainability. Uh, the fact that one of your major uh, products, inputs, if you will, breeds in your lab. Uh, I've got to say, it's not every day that I have a chance to talk about maggots, bullfrogs, medical care, and investing all in the same conversation. So, Carl, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. We've been speaking with Cuprina founder and CTO, Carl Baptista, and you've been watching Global One Media's Stocks to Watch. I'm Michael Suido.